Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <laughs> coding my site. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, in what order do you code the different parts of your websites? So I think I've answered this uh, a few times now, but I'm happy to do so again. Uh, the way that I usually do things is that I have two rules that I try to follow. The first rule is that everything star uh, starts and ends with the model. And the second rule is that I always start, uh, I always work in an MVP fashion. Let me explain that a little bit. So the first rule is very simple. The everything starts and ends with the model. And if you, if you ever had a problem with data or any types of system, it's usually because you can't access the data or the data is in a weird format or it's spread across multiple places, so forth and so forth. The simplest, per most perfect unit for anything that you want to do is usually that all the data that you need can very readily just be read into memory and from like a single entity or something like that. And for those of you who use MongoDB, that's sort of the whole point. I mean, you can do relations and stuff like that and if you really want to, but uh, it's sort of the same thing, the same principle a document database works at, where you, there's a record with all the data that you need. If you can just read that into memory, that is the best thing for you because that's the simplest thing you can do. Sometimes you can't do that either because the systems that you are dealing with, they are like you have multiple data sources or the model was poorly made. It's like, you know, you have a lot of optional fields or so forth and so forth. And sometimes the format of the data is weird where like, I don't know. People uh, create like a we a data structure where you sort of have to parse it in different ways to get it into the shape that you want. Because a lot of what we software developers do is to glorify the process of, well, like that's basically what a web server is, to glorify the creation of a record somewhere or the retrieving of a record or like the mutation transformation of a record of data. And that means that whenever I start creating a system, the first thing I always try to think about is, all right, how roughly what type of domain models am I dealing with? What type of, how do I have to think about the data that I'm going to deal with? Because this, that's gonna tell me more about how I have to design the system. So I'm not a big fan of going like full archi enterprise architect and mapping everything out in charts before I have done my coding because I am a firm believer in that that is the dumbest way to design a system because what you're basically doing in that situation is that you're trying to understand your entire system before you even start coding and that inevitably ends with you making a lot of assumptions and guesses and so forth. My opinion is very simple. I believe more in following feature flows. I am a big believer in event storming, for example, where the basic idea is that there is an event within the system, something that needs to be done, usually a process of some sort, and you try to describe that process in all the steps that are necessary to take place for that thing to be finished. And through that, you will find a feature flow or like a user journey or something like that. And that gives you an indicator to all right, this is sort of how this is going to work and this is sort of the sort of data model that is necessary to make that happen. And when you do that once, that's a good start. You should do it a few times because it's so going to give you like a pattern to the sort of data structure that you're going to need. And then, as I like to say, instead of if you want to create a successful anything in a big system like you know a business in a country or something like that instead of trying to understand the entire country's uh, uh, economy system and like all of this stuff that is so complicated that no human actually does understand it instead of wasting time trying to do it it's better for you to actually just think about the unit that you're dealing with how do i design a really good model that can scale how do i design something where if, for example when there are a lot of unknowns well then if there are a lot of unknowns i need to account for that when i'm creating the model and then may i might have to have an idea of how i'm going to change this model if i realize 
realized that actually now the thing is so complicated that I might have to reshape it a little bit. And so having that more holistic understanding that you can create as a business, for example, rather than trying to create like this gigantic corporation from day one, try to think about just creating a really good shop that really not really really works well and then when your shop permits uh, like uh, success how do you create the next thing or expand that thing into something bigger and more scalable but if you do that too early you end up like decide putting in a lot of work and creating like this roadmap for like how you're going to be a uh, like a gigantic super corporation when all you're really doing is you know selling lemonades in a lemonade stand and for data it's the same thing. So I always start with a model. I always try to think about the data structure and what's going to be a good a good a, a good storage system and what fields I'm gonna have roughly and so forth and so forth. And in order to get there I sort of have to know like a few feature flows that I'm gonna deal with. And that's why our event storming really comes in hell in handy. The other part, uh, the next part is to do work in an MVP fashion and the way I sort of like to think about it is that um, I want to start by building the thing that is most value building to the end user as quickly as possible because the closer I can get to the user the faster I can get feedback because if you do the other thing where a lot if you're waking a web application you, you if some people start on the back end and they try to design the system that's in my opinion complete this is the dumbest thing that you can do I've seen it ha happen a hundred times and it always basically always ends the same way you design a system that does either more than it's supposed to be doing or does the wrong thing because you didn't actually talk to the end user and without talking to the end user and having their perspective on what they want the system to be able to do it's really difficult for you to not start uh, and you, you will always start guessing and that's why waterfall and enterprise architects are in my opinion the dumbest people around when they don't do this thing. User feedback is absolutely critical in order for you to understand how the end system should ideally work. With that said, that usually means that you want to get as close as possible with your feature development. So I usually create a UI first and then I stub all the data because now I have my data models. I know roughly the sort of data that I need and then I mock everything. Usually if I'm working in like a front-end application or something like that, I might use local storage in the browser or just create a very stub server a little mock server that just has like a JSON file that serves up the data that I need that I've just hard coded myself and then I can basically build the entire interface so like the user experience provide that to my end user so that they can play around with a mock implementation they can check it out feel if it's the right thing they want and then when they say that yeah this is actually what I want that's not uh, you know th then I can actually uh, move the fake data uh, further back in the system to maybe a server and then the server serves up the whole thing and like I can connect an API or whatever I'm doing uh, with that fake data and when the communication works then I move the data down into a database and now I have my whole application or that becomes a full stack application depending on like how much of the system I'm actually building right but I always have that that perspective that I always start as close as possible to the end user or to the entry point of what I'm doing because when I'm at that stage it's easier for me to think about what's going to happen for what has to happen further down but if I take the opposite route I'm so far away from the end thing or like the the entry point that it's actually very difficult sometimes to figure out what is the right action to take at this level it's usually easier to think about it from top down in my opinion than bottom up when you're designing a system so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, my two ways, that the way that I code the different parts of my site is very simple. First and foremost, uh, always start with the model. Everything, it come, it, the information age, everything that has to do with web development or things like that is almost always down to how is the data going to be stored? Almost 90% of what you're going to do is storing records and mutating data and stuff like that. And so it's very important for you to think about storage, like how are you going to save your data, what shape is it going to be, and what domain models do you have, etc., etc. That is very, very important. So always, always define that first. 
and then you change it as you go along. So it's really important to have that with you throughout your entire development process. You should never ever underestimate how important this is uh, because the entire system depends everything else caters to the shape of the data. If that is in different places or in multiple systems at the same time, everything else becomes uh, affected by it because it's the lowest unit of the system. Then once that is done, you I try to design top down in an MVP fashion. First, I do, if it, there's a UI or an interface, I create that first and I mock off the data so that the user can like play around with a demo site or something like that. That gives me a feedback cycle that is as close as possible as I can get to the user because I try to work in an event storming type of fashion where I go through feature flows and user journeys rather than trying to just think about the system without talking to anybody because feedback is the key element to writing the creating a system that does the thing that is ex that it needs to do in expectations with the end user and then when I stop off that I can go further and further and closer and closer to the storage which is usually the end layer so MVP fashion at each step and continuous feedback as I go deeper down the stack that's how I do it. Have a great day.